Hi, welcome to episode 71 of the Nitty McPurly podcast. I am Devin, aka Nitty McPurly. You can find me online at nittymcpurly.com or on Instagram as Nitty McPurly. And if you would like to email me, you can email me at devin at nittymcpurly.com. Um, it is a day early. Today is Thursday, March 3rd. Normally I do the podcast on Friday, but I get to go to the dentist tomorrow and get a crown. So thought I would do it today. Um, I'm on all these group texts and people just keep texting me. <laughs> I need to figure it out. This is my fourth cup of coffee today. So I'm a little like, <laughs> Alexis, my, my oldest daughter was asking me, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? And I was like, always two, sometimes three, sometimes four. <laughs> the Lent Mystery Knit Along started yesterday. If you bought the Lent calendar or you bought just the pattern, you should have the first clue in your possession. I sent it out on Sunday of this past week because I wanted to make sure everybody could get all their stuff together in time for Wednesday, or you could start early. You could do whatever you want, really. But um, I'm an early person. I like to be early for stuff. So if you bought the pattern in some way and did not get it, send me a message. Some people, it went into their spam folder um, or whatever. It just, they didn't get it. I sent it, but if it does not arrive, um, let me know and I will resend it to you because you should have the first clue by now. Uh, people are opening their Lent calendar. Oh, the hashtag. Somebody super smart suggested that we have a place to chit chat with each other about the Lent mystery knit along. So I thought, I think the easiest way to do that would be in a way that didn't bother you unless you wanted to be a part of it. Like a Google group or something, you'd get emails about it that you might not want. So I thought the best way to do it is just use a hashtag. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. The hashtag is hashtag KMP, Nitty McPurley, Lent MCAL 2022. KMP Lent MCAL mcal 2022 so anything that you want to put on instagram use that hashtag and then if you want to see other people's stuff you can just go look at that hashtag go to the little search bar type in that hashtag and you can see what other people have put up there and i think you can even have instagram notify you when a new one comes up or it'll just pop up in your feed so that way you can see what other people are doing and you can see their progress and you can comment and that way we can all talk about it if you would like to do that. And if you don't wanna do that, that's totally fine. You can just not do that. So this is very exciting. I have had people message me and say, I am actually excited about Lent for the first time ever. <laughs> that is awesome, I love it. I'm usually excited about Lent because I need it. Like I need some discipline in my life. Things, especially after Christmas, things start to get a little loosey-goosey and I need to rediscipline myself. So clearly I'm not doing that with caffeine. <laughs> caffeine is one of those things I just don't limit. Like I can't, <laughs> I need it. So if you bought the pattern or the Lent calendar, at the end of the Mystery Knit Along, I will give you a code to go to my website and download the entire pattern for free. Um, I might also just send you the pattern, so I might do both, we'll see. The good thing about the code is that you could access it later at any time. Um, I did that also with the advent calendar. That'll be true of all of my calendars. When you, when you get clues one at a time, at the end, you'll be able to go back and download that whole pattern if you ever wanna make it again you've essentially bought into that whole thing. And if you lose it or whatever, just message me and I will find it for you and fix it. And you know, it's always there for you. I had somebody message me this week and say, I bought a gift card a couple of years ago and I don't know anything about what the order number was. I just wanna access it. And I was like, okay, cause I can look stuff up by your name. And I looked it up by her name and I resent it to her and she was able, she wanted to gift it. So she was able to gift it to that person and it all worked out. There is no unsolvable problem. 
So if you have a problem, you can't download your pattern. I've had that question come up a few times too, where especially if you're on an iPad, most people who download a pattern and it's gibberish are on an iPad. You have to have a pattern reader, which usually people do have, because if you're on an iPad and you're using knitting patterns that you bought online, usually you need an, a PDF reader. Did I say iPad reader? <laughs> a PDF reader. But I do have a couple patterns that are available in more than one language, and those will come to you as a zip file. So if you get one of those, um, mostly it's my Colorwork sweaters, and you can't read it, just email me and I'll send you the pattern just in English or just in French or German or whatever that you want, and that will solve that problem. Um, okay, that's my intro, progress and shop news. Um, I have something new in the shop. Stickers. Woo woo. I don't, oh, I do. I have my iPad right here. I have knitting Murdog unicorn stickers. These came out so good. Let's see if it'll focus on that. These came out so good. I love them so much. I haven't put it on my car yet, basically because I need to clean that spot <laughs> to put it on. It's, I, you know, I don't wash the car. I don't care about that so <laughs> um but these are super cute you can get these in the shop they're two bucks they are weatherproof sun water rain snow resistant you can put them on um a mug i don't have that one up here with me but uh you can put them on the car and they should hold up that's the story um but anyway they're two dollars in the shop or if you want to place a fifty dollar order you can do that and you'll get one for free along with your lip balm. Free lip balm, free stickers for all $50 orders. If you're going, well, geez, Devin, I'd love to do that, but what am I gonna spend 50 bucks on? There are, I believe, hat kits and some a few mitten kits left, not very many. There's Patriot sock sets. There is knitters hand balm. There's always stitch marker necklaces. I'm wearing my Roxanne spinning one. Let me show you how this spins. And this only holds, this is the broken one. I, I kept the broken one. This has one door that won't shut. So I kept this one for myself, but the other doors will shut. I don't have stitch markers in there right now, but I could put them in. Um, but this is a really pretty necklace. I just think it looks really classy on. And this is the silver one. I have this in silver and gold. Tried to order it in rose gold and they just have not had it in stock, but I hope that they will at some point. So necklaces, there's a lot of stuff that you can get, or you could just order patterns. Um, and that's actually a good deal because you wouldn't even have to pay shipping. And I would send it to you without even you having to pay shipping if you bought $50 in patterns. Um, but it's actually only a $44 order that you need to place because if your shipping puts you at $50, I will still send you those goodies because I hate when you need to spend a certain amount to get whatever the thing is, free shipping or the deal or whatever, and you're like three cents short, but your shipping covers it, and then you still have to spend that extra three cents. So I'm including the shipping in that too. So really with your $44 shipped order, you can get a free Murdog sticker and Nitty McPearly lip balm. Which brings me to, um, this is mine, as I showed you last time, it's always got lipstick on it. <laughs> brings me to a review that I wanted to read to you from Sarah who I loved her review. She put it up on Instagram. She is uh, 231 Baker Street. Is that right? I think it's 231 Baker Street. And I really appreciated her review because she was unsure about buying it. She, she's picky about lotion and lip balm. And that made her review very valuable. And I felt she gave a really honest review. So I wanted to read that to you in case you were also unsure. She says, I was a little unsure about the hand balm. She says, I'm so picky about my lotion. Don't ever buy me lotion from Bath and Body Works. Okay, so that's helpful information. She says, I think I'm gonna like it. It's not sticky or greasy, but it doesn't disappear like you never put it on. Now, it depends how you put it on. If you do the conservative one where you just get a little and you put it on, I personally think it disappears. However, I usually go all in and get a clump of it and I, I go all in with it. If you go all in, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. 
She says the consistency is different from lotion, but it melts into the skin nicely. She says the scent is pretty subtle too. She was nervous about the scent because she is scent sensitive. They can give her headaches. She says she usually only goes for natural scents like lavender or unscented, but she has tried this and it did not give her a headache. And she wrote this about a week ago. So I messaged her this morning and said, I'd love to read your review on my podcast. Can you update me on how your head is? Like, is it giving you any headaches? And she said, she, no headaches at all. Sometimes she uses both the lip balm and the hand balm, no headaches. So that is a good sign. Um, yeah, so she says she likes it. Now, one thing she said that I thought was totally true is that she felt that the lip balm went on a little heavy, and I totally agree with that. But I'm one of those people who sits there with a lip balm and does this. <laughs> because it's never enough. So this does go on a little bit heavy, but that's what I like about it. So if you like a lighter lip balm, like a chat, like a chapstick, you know, with the blue or the black um, label, that goes on. It's like it's almost it's waxier and it just goes on less. If you like a lot, this is good for you. I like a lot, so that's me. Or you just want to go light with it, depending on which type you are. So that stuff is in the shop. Um, what else? Okay, I did all that stuff. Okay, that's shop news. Progress. I've actually been doing a lot of knitting on this sweater and I have ripped back a lot. So it doesn't actually look like I have made that much progress, but I have. This is the boring beige sweater. And here is the sleeve. So you can see the, the decreases. I was decreasing at a certain rate and I, I didn't like it, so I ripped it back and I'm decreasing at another rate. And I actually started adding in the color work before it had fully come to the, the slim part. I was still decreasing and I didn't like it. It just looked wrong to me. So I'm going to be fully decreasing all the way until I get to the color work part. So I've actually knit a lot and ripped back a lot. Also, let me show you the colors that I came up with. These colors are fabulous. I totally love them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. I totally love them. We have like a peach and a dark yellow. Both have speckles. I definitely want speckles. But I thought this would be nice and subtle. And it is. But it's too subtle. I don't like it. It looks too boring. So I think what I'm going to do is dye up a new color. I think I'm going to keep the peach and I'm going to dye up a green that is darker and offers more, more contrast to these colors. A good way to tell if you have enough contrast and what we're describing here is not the color because obviously these three colors are different, but the value Value determine, value describes the lightness and darkness of a color. If you were to take a picture of these three colors and put it into black and white, they would look almost the same. That's a good way to determine if you have good contrast in value. Take a picture of your yarns together, turn it into a black and white picture, and if they look pretty much the same, then you wanna do something different there. Unless that's the look you're going for, it's not what I want here. I need something different. So this, I need something that has a darker value. Does that make sense? When, when combining colors, value is an important factor to take into consideration. That's what often gives you that pop. You're gonna get a pop when you have something that is of a darker or lighter value than the other colors. So here I've, I'm kind of working with all the same palette and I just, I just didn't like it. So um, hopefully next week, I imagine, I, it's a whole week away. I think I should be able to do it. I should be done decreasing on this sleeve and I should have picked up with my new color with this, the green and this, because I just love this together. It's like my mermaid set. I just love the peach with speckles uh, and the green with speckles. I definitely want them to both have speckles because uh, that will make them more interesting too as a contrast to this plain beige. 
So that's where I am with that sweater. Lots of you signed up to test knit. Again, I'm gonna send out the email to everyone like I usually do. It's not an audition. It's really just who has the time and the willingness and the interest in doing it. Um, in the past, I've kept my test knits kind of small because that's a very manageable thing. I've done big test knits before and both ways work, but only sign up if you are really in for it. Like I wanna, I wanna try to finish the pattern. No pressure, if you don't, lightning will not come down and strike you. But uh, if you wanna try to finish the pattern and you are willing to give feedback, that's the type of person who I'm looking for. So I'll send out that email. If you haven't done so yet and you want to sign up to test knit, go on my website. There's a little link. I think it says become a test knitter and you just send it to me saying that you would be interested in test knitting. Um, this week's word of the week is darn, darn. <laughs> and the reason I came up with this topic is because I have never darned a sock. <gasps> have you darned a sock? Probably. A lot of us are sock knitters. I have thrown away hand knit socks before for multiple reasons, not just because they had holes, but I've never darned a sock. And I recently have had a beloved pair of socks have a hole in them. And that's going to be my topic of the week too. We're going to do that together. We're going to darn it all up. Uh, but I thought, let's talk about the word darn. So this word comes from the old English. It enters the English language in the early 17th century from dernen, dern, D-E-R-N, which means to hide or conceal, which led to darn. But it's basically before that, it, it's of West Germanic origin. Or from Middle Dutch, dernen, D-E-R-N-E-N, -E -E which means to stop a hole in a dike. Makes sense, right? Up in Holland, they've got those dikes and you just picture the little Dutch boy with his finger in the dike. To, to plug up a hole is dernen. So to hide, conceal, to plug up a hole leads to the word darn, to sew a hole in the sock. Also from the French, darner, D-A-R-N-E-R, -E meaning to mend. Probably all of these have a common origin. So last week, when I was talking about cables, my brother sends me a text and he goes, I'm pretty sure it predates the Latin. Look it up in Hindi. And I was like, how do you look up something in Hindi? I don't know how to do that. I don't speak Hindi. Does anyone out there speak Hindi? If you do, look up cable and let me know what it says. <laughs> I don't read Hindi. I wish I did, but I don't. <laughs> so if it goes back beyond that, I just don't know where it came from. That's, that's a mystery to me. Okay, so the OED, which my father-in-law gave, lent me his copy of, I think I said that last week, said that the derivation is unknown, but it became very common in use after 1600. So it would be interesting to know where that came from because all of those words from the French, the Dutch, and the German, which are countries that aren't that far apart, have a word that is similar to mean kind of the same thing. Maybe it's Hindi. I need some Hindi speakers out there to help me out. Hook me up with the pre-English meaning of these words. <laughs> the pre-European meaning, basically. Okay, another interesting fact about the word darn is that it became a low-level swear word of about 50, 150 years later. In 1781, in New England, in the U.S., swearing was a punishable offense. And so it was in that year, I looked it up in both Merriam-Webster and the OED, and they both cited 1781 as the first use of the word darn to mean like, darn it all. Um, or like from the Lego movie, darn, darn, darny, darn. <laughs> I love how the Lego movie uses those, like um, it was a heckish place to live. <laughs> or oh my G-O-S-H. <laughs> Um, anyway, there is your word of the week. That is it. Okay, our topic of the week is darning because of my holy socks. So let me show you. 
This is my pearl, my pearl socks, which are some of my favorite socks. These socks are just so pretty. Maybe I can put up a picture of them on a sock blocker here, a couple pictures. These socks are just so beautiful. I love them so much. And uh, they have come up. Now I just washed these, so they, you know, the bottoms of them are a little discolored because they are off-white socks, but they did just get washed just now. I just took them off the drying rack. And there is a hole in the toe. Now this is a reverse stockinette toe. And I am going to be putting in a video of me fixing this hole. One of the things that you need in order to darn a hole of this size is stitches around it. So being this close to the toe does present a little bit of an issue because right here we have our decreases, but I think we can do it. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and put that video in here. All right, guys, you'll have to bear with me as I film this. Um, this is legit my first time doing this. So you never know how many tries this is gonna take us. Now this is reverse stockinette, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a stockinette patch in this contrast color because why not? I feel like that's totally fine. Um, I'm gonna follow the directions as best as I can from the Woolery. I'm using a size one needle. I have some double points here. Now, what I would do if this was stockinette is I would go in one leg of the stitch, but since this is reverse stockinette, I'm just gonna go in here to pick up stitches. I'm gonna go into Let's see if you can see that. I'm gonna, so that's a stitch right there. That's a stitch. You can see where they kind of go one way or the other. That's one stitch. So I'm gonna pick up that one, that one, that one across. Okay, does that make sense? This would be easier if you were doing it in stockinette. So let's give this a try. All right, can we see here? All right. So I'm going to pick up a knit. Do I pick up a knit? Maybe not. Maybe I just pick up the stitches. Let's try that. So I want to go above the hole and also a little bit outside the hole because my patch obviously needs to be larger than the hole. One, two. I personally don't think it really matters all that much. What you pick up here, this is the bottom of my foot. I don't really care about perfection. What I really want is not a hole, okay? So that's me. I'm trying to pick up one stitch. Okay, there. So there is our picked up row at the top of the hole. All right, now I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna do it this way. If I, I You could do stockinette or reverse stockinette. I'm gonna go ahead and do stockinette. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and knit these stitches that I picked up. Sometimes it's easier to go in through the back loop when you pick up stitches like this. Go in through the back loop. Okay, now I'm gonna turn my work and I am going to Oh, you know what? I think I did it wrong. Maybe I am gonna do reverse stockinette. Yeah, let's go ahead and do reverse stockinette. Change of plans. Here, try and keep it in the middle here. All right, oops. Okay, too much coffee today. My hands are shaky. <laughs> All right, there we go. I also get nervous when people are watching me. Do you get nervous when people are watching you? Breaks me out a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna purl back. So I changed my mind. I decided to do reverse stockinette. So this is not so much a tutorial of excellence as a you know trial and error sort of deal. Okay, so there I have a little bit of stitching. Now here, I am going to, I want to tack down my patch as I go. So what I'm gonna do, can you see that? 
is pick up a stitch that's outside the realm of the hole, like that, okay? And then I'm gonna knit two together because what I'm doing is tacking down the edge of the patch. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it in the middle here. I don't know how people do this in a, like a professional way. This is me just guessing. I've got like my makeup mirror here to help me. Okay, now at the end, I'm gonna leave one stitch, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick up a stitch here and put it on the needle. I'm gonna knit two together through the back loop because that's easier, all right? And then I'm gonna purl back. I have to stop myself from humming. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep doing that basically. All right, on one side, I'm just gonna be, hmm, interesting, it doesn't look like it's laying flat, but I think it is. I'm just gonna be, oops, picking up a stitch, down a little bit on the knit side, and putting it over and then Knitting those two stitches together. And let's see what we have. Oops, I moved my mirror. <laughs> okay, so basically what we're doing is we're knitting a patch right over top of the hole. I think that's gonna look great. So we're just gonna keep going with the same process. on this side. And then when we get to the knit side, we're gonna tack it down. Okay, I'm gonna go down a little bit because look, that's gotta be, I hope I'm, I'm getting enough far enough away from the hole. I think I'm gonna move over a little bit. You know, like I said, I've never done this before. I'm not sure how this is gonna wear, but I am excited. That's more than one stitch. These socks have been around the block a bit, so some of the yarn has felted together a little bit. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Um. Okay, there we go. You know, it's kind of my dream to be the Bob Ross of knitting. Like, happy mistakes, happy trees, happy stitches. We don't need perfection. Just give it your best. As, as good as what's needed for the bottom of your foot. So leave that last stitch on. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop down a little bit and pick up a stitch. Put it on that needle. And if it's easier to knit through the back loop, knit through the back loop. Doesn't matter. Okay. Don't overthink it, basically. And that is looking fabulous. I love it. I kind of love that it's in a contrast color. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up that stitch there. Whoops. Whenever I get self-conscious about what I'm doing, I, I get become all thumbs. Again, that's not fully one stitch, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and knit those together. Whoops. And you can, you know, if you wanted to work it on the other side, you could, you can just purl two together, do it however you want. I guess what I'm trying to get across here is don't be afraid to just jump in and do it. Because the worst thing that could happen is that you make a mistake and you have to take it out. And I'm just guessing, this is my very, very first time doing it. So knit two together. And we're getting there. Look, our hole is almost covered. Oh, I love it. It looks so good. Okay, and then we're gonna purl back. Feel free to um, fast forward if you want to. Now, one thing that you might wonder, because if I were you, I would be wondering this, is where the heck is the darning egg? And you know, like I said, I'm clearly new at this and I don't, I don't have any experience to speak to, but one thing that that article from the Woolery said 
is that when doing the woven patch, that is the time that you would definitely need to have the darning egg. Because uh, a sock is stretchy, I'm gonna go over here because I don't wanna get too close to the hole. A sock is stretchy and the woven patch is not stretchy. So you need to have your sock at the right tension over the darning egg. I actually have one of those. I get my groceries at Lidl and sometimes Lidl will have, it's like Aldi basically, If you, I don't know if you have one near you, but um, I'm gonna go down a little bit, grab that guy. It's a happy little stitch. <laughs> grab that little guy and put him on the needle. And then we're gonna knit those two together through the back loop cause who cares, whatever. And we're getting there. All right, I love it. Now, one thing that the article says is you might feel it at first, but it'll get smushy the more that you wear it. So don't, don't worry about it unless, you know, it's going on a person who has like sensory issues. I know some children can't handle the feel of a seam on a sock. That's real. So we're just gonna purl our way across and not become self-conscious. I think I need just to do this more because then I will be less self-conscious. I've had people who do podcasts, who um, do them with someone else say, how do you come up with so much to talk about? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just my inner dialogue. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna knit two together through the back loop. You don't have to, whatever's easiest. Knit two together in the manner that is easiest for you. And we're gonna knit across. Oh gosh, you know what I just realized? At the end, I'm gonna have live stitches that I need to Kitchener and I do not have a darning needle. A darning needle? Is that what it's called? No, I totally made that up. A tapestry needle. That's what it is. So we're going to knit two together. And we're getting there. Okay. Pearl across. Totally doing this Bob Ross style where you see the whole thing. I hope it's meditative. Or you can fast forward if it's not your thing. I feel like our attention span is less than it was in the 70s and 80s. I love Bob Ross. Love, love, love. He was a wonderful guy. He got a raw deal at the end. <sighs> okay. Here we go. Looks like we're almost there. Okay, our patch almost covers everything we needed to cover. I think I'm just gonna go down one more and then I'm gonna go grab a tapestry needle and we're gonna Kitchener that puppy. So I'm gonna grab one stitch and put it up on the needle. Then I'm gonna knit two together. This time I'll do it through the front loop. If you're picky and you wanna be consistent, you can do that. I do not care. Okay, so this is our last stitch to pick up, to tack onto the side, and we're gonna knit two together. You know, if you wanted to be really fancy, you could knit two together on one side, slip, slip, knit on the other side. Totally an option. Okay, so I'm gonna run and grab a, a tapestry needle. Before I do that, I will pick up our other quote unquote live stitches here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna pick up seven stitches and that's gonna be right about here. One, two, can you see? Three, four, five, six, seven. Eh, I don't even know what that is, what is that? There we go. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and break my yarn. They always say you don't need that much, like 12 in, or 8 inches or something, but I always do a lot more. All right, let me pause the video. I'll get a needle and okay. be right back. So here we are. I am back with my tapestry needle. 
And I'm going to go ahead and thread my tapestry needle. This is the way I do it. I go like that, and then you get a little folded piece and it goes through a little bit easier. Okay. Now, I do not look up how to do a Kitchener stitch ever. I just wing it. Uh, I think of it as, now this is gonna be a little bit confusing because I'm doing reverse stockinette, but we're gonna call this the knit side and this the purl side. Okay, so with our first one, we go in as if to knit because this would be the knit side. Oops, picked up something there. And then with this one, we go in as if to, so I cut this part out because what I was saying I was doing didn't match what I was actually doing. Anyway, Kitchener the stitches together and you end up with a little patch completely attached to the sock. Uh, I think this turned out really great. I'm very, very happy with it and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So what before I did this uh, darning, I looked up how to darn a sock. And um, one of the sites that I found a lot of good information on is the Woolery. I will link it down below. And they presented three methods for darning. And I used the third method. The first method is best used when it is worn thin, not when you've got an all out hole like I had. So if it is worn thin, you can just do duplicate stitch, which is where you, you take a, a length of yarn and you put it on a yarn needle and you just kind of sew in and out of the sock to go over the legs of the stitches to replace those stitches. Um, if you need more detail on that, I'll put the link below and you can go click on how to do that. But again, that doesn't work when you have an all out hole. That it looks like I have a crown. My mom actually messaged me and she's like, you need to fix this. This is wrong. I don't know if I did. Did I do it, mom? I don't know. <laughs> you can see the, here. This is such a professional operation that I have going on here. So, <laughs> so professional. I don't know, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> and I also have my hooks here that I never hang anything on. What the heck? Like in my mind, I would put these hooks here and I would have all the things I was gonna talk about on them, but then I never do. I don't know, maybe I'll take them down, we'll see. Or maybe I'll just hang stuff on them. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Anyway. The first way is duplicate stitch, better for a worn spot than a hole. The second way is a way that I don't really understand why it even exists. It's a woven patch where you basically create a warp and a weft, I don't remember which goes which way, uh, and you're you know weaving a patch. But weaving is not stretchy. I've never tried it, so I'm, I'm dissing it without ever having tried it. But to me, the knitted on patch seems like the way that makes the most sense. And you can find details of how to do this other than my tutorial that I just showed, uh, awkward as it might've been. I don't know, I haven't done it yet. Um, you can find details on how to do all of these uh, methods at thewoolery.com, I will link it below. Okay, there is a new segment to the show. I don't know that I will be able to do it every week, but I drew a little comic and I'll put it up here as I'm talking. Um, I've just been playing around more with Procreate on my iPad and I want to get better at all of the tools. And this is a super basic, very easy, kind of a hearty har har knee slapping <laughs> little joke that's not that funny, but I enjoyed doing it and it was a good learning experience for me. And I'm just sharing it here because it's a fun little comic. This is the comic of the week. This week's comic is a cute little sock who needs to be fixed and just fix them up. Remember all that time you guys spent together knitting? It was, it was a lot of time, so don't throw him in the trash. He's worth more than that. <laughs> okay, moving on to our knitting fantasies, which will keep with everything else that we have been doing, and it is sock patterns. This is the lazy man's um, knitting fantasies this week because I am just going to talk about them as I put the pictures of each one here up. These are free sock patterns. There are eight of them and I found them on an interweave knits article that I will link down below. So if you want any one of these sock patterns, you can click that link, go to the interweave article and click on the pattern and get it that way. 
all free sock patterns. Uh, there are lace socks and striped socks and cabled socks and fair isle socks. My favorite is a pair of fair isle socks by Mary Jane Mucklestone. I just think that those are great. These are all really nice sock patterns. None of them look free. Um, sometimes you get what you pay for, I'm not endorsing any free patterns that I mentioned because you just never know what you're going to get. However, with someone like Mary Jane Mucklestone, obviously she is... Um, you know, a legit designer and is her patterns are going to be great, I would imagine. So, okay, and that brings us to, so here's what happened. I have a wonderful and heartwarming story that is a video, yay, from a wonderful podcast listener named Janice. And she tells just the best, most heartwarming story. I think it's one a lot of you will be able to relate to. Um, Let's listen to that. Here's Janice. Good afternoon, Devin, and all of the other podcast listeners. Sure enjoy your program. Well, my story is this. Many of us have a rich legacy of handmade pieces gifted to us from generation to generation. As a child, I remember my maternal grandmother crocheting chevron-style afghans, which many of my family still use today. My mother also knitted and sewed and embroidered and did cross stitch. She did such beautiful work. Behind me you will see an afghan given to me for my birthday in March of 2020. I was at my parents house helping arrange for an in-home assistance for my dad and mom as my dad received hospice care as well. It was a really hectic time and as a result I happened to be there on my birthday which resulted in my mother offering to give me something as a gift. I told her I'd always admired this afghan, which reminded me of stained glass window. She gladly granted my wish and gave that to me. My mom learned to, to knit in her 30s during the 1960s. She told me an Air Force wife stationed in Colorado Springs had invited ladies from church to come and learn. This lady had previously been at a military posting which her husband had in England and that is where she had learned to knit. I'd like to claim that I learned to knit from my mother, but as her only daughter, I was mostly just the beneficiary of so many lovely items. But she had set that example for me. And... Um, I'm sorry that I didn't learn so many of these things from her, but I am happily engaged in doing a lot of sewing, knitting, and many other items now today for my family and my grandchildren. Well, my mother is now in a memory care center, and she no longer remembers how to do any of these crafts she was so proficient at. Recently, I came across this photo of her knitting this very item. What a treasure to find this among many of my photographs. Something of my mom actually knitting. I just want to encourage all of your listeners to document these things for those in your family of the things that you love doing, of the things they love doing, so that you can have mementos of those things going forward into the future. It was really wonderful to have this photograph of her knitting this because I was able to discover that it was knitted back in 1986. Have a wonderful day and thank you for letting me contribute this story. I love that story. I thought it was so sweet. I messaged her and asked about the yarn that her mom used. And she said it was acrylic, not wool, which is actually pretty good because acrylic holds up. That will last a long time and you don't have to worry about anything like moths. Um, I actually got a couple comments about yarn last time saying that about acrylic, that it's very you know easy to care for. It lasts a long time. Um, and with regard to superwash yarn, some people said they just wash it and dry it to each his own. You can totally do that. I talked about using the superwash yarn last week and about how you need to block it carefully 
but the truth is you can put it in the dryer if it grows too much. And I would say just check it every five or 10 minutes to make sure it's not shrinking up beyond what you want. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me this week. This has been so much fun. Um, I hope you love the knit along. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Go check out the website. Thank you, Janice, for your knitting story. And if you have a knitting story that you would like to send me, send that to me in an email or an Instagram direct message. Email is better because then I can find it more easily. I love videos. I have another one for next week. Yay! So send me one of those if you have a knitting story, and I would love to share it on the podcast. All right. Happy knitting. Bye, knitters. Hi, knitters. Welcome to episode 71 of the Knitting McPurley podcast. I am Devin Ventry, Knitting McPurley, aka. You can find me online at my website at knittingmcpurley.com. And sorry, people keep texting me. <laughs> I need to mute all these group texts. No. Let's try again. No bloops. Okay. I'm being sad with Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, Rocky. Hi. Oh. Such a good boy. Yeah. He's sniffing the coffee. <laughs> How are you, Charlotte? You feeling better? Yeah. Whenever Charlotte goes to, whenever you send a homeschooler, watch your titsies, I'm going to back up a little bit. Whenever you send a homeschooler to gymnastics, she gets sick every week. But she's okay. No vomiting this week, right? I want to, I want to put him in his bed. He's really tired. Oh, he won't sleep. This, this He's dog just needs, sleeping. Yeah, but he, he, won't he, he won't, he won't, he won't sleep. Sure. Be, be careful. Char he need Charlotte. He needs to go back downstairs. He's not going to sleep. He's going to sleep. No, 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 no. I know that dog and he needs to run. This is not yours. Okay. Take, take him downstairs. Uh, have Gigi. It's nice out. Have Gigi take him outside and he can run. Do you want to say goodbye to the people? I wanna... To the knitter. Oh, Oops. that's okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm actually glad because I wanted to talk about this. Okay. I want to hug. Okay. <gasps> Say goodbye to the knitters. Bye. Bye, knitters. <laughs> All right. Come on.